Hey, this is Luke with SaltStrong. In this video, we're gonna be doing a monofilament versus fluorocarbon line stress test. A member sent in a question, and, and apparently there's some study out that showed that when fluorocarbon lines are stressed, right, where they're stretched, if you're fighting a big fish, and then the line goes back down, that the line is compromised, that the next time it gets stressed, the breaking point is gonna be much lower, while monofilament, traditional monofilament line, it can be stretched out and then, and then taken back and with, without, without losing its, uh, its actual strength. So what we have is a line tester. We have multiple lines. We have, this is a traditional monofilament. This is gonna represent the mono. Uh, we have, this is from Andy, and we have an Andy fluorocarbon line as well, just that we're not trying to pick on one brand versus the other. This is brand new, uh, just came out, I just picked it up. And then we have one of the, the most expensive fluorocarbon lines that I've seen so far. This is from Seaguar, it's called the Premier. So we're gonna be testing all those out. I have already gotten the, the, the actual breaking points. So I'm using the Orvis knot. So we're using the same knots for all of them. And I have the averages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to a pound less than the lowest breaking point. And then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna take the pressure off and then I'm gonna apply pressure back and see if the next break is gonna be much lower. What I've noticed while doing the averages, if you look at these lines, it is very noticeable how these lines look after breaking, right? This is the mono and it still has its natural straight shape, right? It's natural curve. Whereas these fluorocarbon lines, right? These are the ones that actually did break. The, after the break, they're all, they're all kinked up. Like you can definitely tell a difference between those, those lines. Really, really fascinating. All right, so now for the first test, we're gonna do the, the monofilament. And you know, based on, I just did three tests before, got the average, it's 19.3. The lowest one was 18.56. So I'm gonna take it up to 17 pounds and then stress it out a little bit and then take it down and then we'll do a final one to, uh, to break it. So let's go ahead and do it. Put my arm there to make sure I don't get hit in the face. If it breaks quicker than I thought, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17.91. Good amount of tension on that line. Hold it there for a second. Now we're gonna go back. And let me go ahead and zero it out. And now we're gonna take it back again and see where the breaking point is, if it's any different. Starting to build up, up to 10, 12, 17. Oh, wow. Wow, so that actually, that was the best breaking point we've had so far. It actually was 22.56 pounds. So that was way, the mono actually, in this case, got better. Obviously, there's gonna be some variability, 22.56. So the mono actually got better after it got stressed a little bit. Again, I think that there's gonna be some sort of deviation in the numbers. So we're gonna do that same thing. I'll load up a fluoro and we'll try it with that. All right, so now we're gonna do the Seaguar. In this case, the average was 15.03 and the weakest one was 14.8. So we'll take it up to about 13 pounds, let it sit for a little bit, and then we'll try to see how that impacts the results. 11, 12, 13. So we got up to 13.56. That's just a little bit less than the breaking point. Let it sit for a second, go back down, zero it out again. And now we'll see what this final break is after getting stressed. Four, five, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 15.68. So it didn't get better like the mono, but, uh, but again, we'll do a couple rounds of this and see if there's any difference. That was uh, per the comment that I saw, that should have been less. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes on throughout. All right, so next we're gonna go to this Andy fluorocarbon. And again, this is brand new line. The average was 16.2 pounds and the lowest was 15.7. So I'll take this one up to about 14 pounds and then, uh, and then pause and see how that compares. 15, 14, so there's 14.7 pounds, nice and tight there. Let it sit for a second. Go back down, just like with the other one, right? This line is actually looking pretty good. It's not compromised, we'll zero it out. And now let's see what the new breaking point is, if it's changed. There we have five pounds, eight, 11, 12, 15. So 15.58, so that was a new low for this line, 15.58. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the, just another sequence of these and I'm gonna take it up just a little bit higher I basically gave all of them about a two pound, um, you know, two pound gap between the, the breaking point versus um, where, I, where I had the tension point. And so this time I'm gonna take it up a pound, I'm gonna take them all up a pound and see if that impacts the actual breaking point of the line after they're stressed. All right, so now a second stress test on the Andy. I'm gonna stress it out two times this, this round just to see how they do. So 
Last time was around 19 pounds. We'll take it up to let's see, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Go a little bit more. So 17. Let it sit for a little bit. We're going to take it down. And so now this is the second stress up to 17. So stress that one to 18.15, let it sit for a little bit. Now we're gonna take it back down. In this third round, we're gonna break it and see if that makes a difference or not. All right, final break time. Andy Mono after two stress tests. 15, 17, 18, wow, 21.77. So this one outperformed the initial batch again, and that was after two times of getting stretched, 2177. All right, so now we're gonna repeat that for the fluoros. All right, now we have the cigar. We're gonna do the double stress test and see how it does. And now after two stresses, we'll do a final break and see where that ends up. Oh, wow, so, so that was 14 pounds even. That is definitely the lowest we've seen so far. So 14 pounds, that's a, that's a full pound under the average before. So that is a, that's a 20 pound line as well. That's, that's really not very good for a line to be that less. And when we look at the kinks, we can see some really sharp kinks in that line. So all that stretching certainly compromised it. All right, so now the double stress test on the Andy Fluoro. All right, so now after the two stresses, we're gonna break this Andy Fluoro and see how that does. The average before was 16.2. We're now at six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, 13.16. Okay, so that is the difference. It's how many times do these lines get stressed? That one was stressed twice and it noticeably got worse. And on the second stress, I actually took it a little bit too far. I actually went to, uh, to almost its average. I, I took it up to 16 pounds. And then when we went back down the next time, 13 pounds. So it lost three pounds after one stress. Really crazy. All right, so now that it seems like the quantity of times that we stress it makes a bigger difference. So this time we're gonna stress it five times and then do the final break and see how that does. First one with mono, we're obviously not gonna film the entire thing for because it's gonna be boring, but we'll stress it out five times and then break and see how it does. All right, so we just did five stresses on the regular mono. These are all 20 pound lines. And so now we're gonna do the final break and see how it does. The average before stress was 19.3. The averages after a couple stresses has been over 20. And so now we're at 15, 16, 18, 22, 22.19. That's the second best of all of them. So there was definitely no weakening of regular mono after getting, after getting stressed multiple times. So that is crazy. So 22, let me log that. So now we're going to do the same scenario with this Premier and see how it does. All right, so first stress with this Seagar Premier. The average was 15, so we'll take it up to about 14 on this first one, and then I'll slowly go down after that. So there's, all right, so, right 14.92. I'm actually logging these so we can track them all. So 14.9, we'll take it down. And just out of precaution, I'll just go down, I'll go up to about 13 on the next one. Oh, wow, it just broke at 12.06. So in this case, that was, the, that was the fourth stress test and it broke at just 12 pounds. That is shocking. That went from a 15 pound average before stress down to 12 after just four takes. That is mind blowing. And you can see this line, check this thing out. This is all gnarled up. Let me cut it off so you can see it on that black screen. It is just crazy how much this line seems to degrade after getting stressed out. And so I just did some quick math, and this is mind blowing, is the fact that after four stresses, it went from an average of a 15, you know, 15.03 for the average of, of where the line would break, all the way down to 12.06. That is a 20% decline after just four stresses. So after seeing those results, I had to test this one more time. I really want to get to five breaks, so I'm gonna start off normal, and then I'll just taper it down a little bit more aggressively so we don't break the line. So let's go ahead and do the first one. We'll get up to about 14 and a half pounds and then lessen it from there. Oh my gosh. So after the second stress, it went from 15.2 down to 13.03. That was just after one big pull. 
again, it is shocking. That's the same line, same knot, same everything. And that is a, that's over two pound difference on one pull at 15 pounds. That's over 10% after, after one stress. So we're, we'll go on back over to Andy. We'll do the Andy Fluoro and see if that has similar results to the Seaguar Fluoro. All right, so now the final line, we're gonna do five stresses if we can get there. But yeah, five stresses on the Andy Fluoro. All right, so we just did five stresses on this Andy Fluoro, and now we're gonna do the fifth one just to see where it breaks. So it start, the highest we got to is 15.4 for this exact line. Before the stresses, it was averaging at 16.2. So we'll see what the final break compares to. Five stresses, okay, wow, so 15.08. So that was actually way better than uh, the prior one. So after two stresses, for whatever reason, it got compromised way quicker. It still got worse, but just not to the extent that the prior ones did. All right, so I just did the final tallies and Otis here is the referee to make sure that my math was right. But yeah, this was some surprising findings. So, you know, granted the sample size were three. So this isn't the huge sample size, so this isn't perfect, but the disparity is big enough where I can confidently say that we had some noticeable findings. And it really seemed like, first of all, the mono did not have any decrease at all from getting stress. If anything, it actually got better so the weakest of the, the post-stress breaks was actually better than the best of the pre-stress breaks. So it seems like when that mono tightens, that knot and then loosens up, somehow that knot gets stronger, or at least maybe forms a little bit better, more, more uh, efficiently. And then it turns out it gets better over time. And again, even after five stresses, there was really no decline. Whereas on the fluorocarbon lines, as soon as it got stressed, especially if it got stressed up close to the breaking point, that's when it had the noticeable decline. For example, after one stress of this Seaguar, it went, it went from an average of 15.03, it actually went up to 15.6. But on the next one, it went down to 12.06. 12.06, that was after four stresses. And that's, again, that's just been shocking how quickly it degrades. It went from a 14.9, so this is the same line, same knot, same everything, on the first stress from a 14.9, and then three stresses later, all the way down to 12 pounds. That is a big percentage decline. That's almost a 20% decrease that has no variables other than stress. It was the same knots on the same line. It was just stressed multiple times, and that is not good. That, that is a significant issue with fluorocarbon line. We've done a lot of other tests. I'm personally not a fan of fluorocarbon before this test based on the abrasion resistance uh, test that we've done where, where mono is provably better. Now mono is provably better with actually you know fighting fish that, that pulls hard and goes, goes back and forth. So that was the Seaguar. This Andy didn't seem to have quite as much disparity, um, but in doing the math, the average before stress was, was 16.2, and then the average after stress was 14.61. That was a 10% decline. But what was interesting on this one is that the, the stress where we just stressed it twice, that had the worst results compared to stressing it five times. And I think the reason was is because the first stress of round two, when I did the two stresses, the first one got really close to the breaking point and then went down. And that's where most of the compromise seems to happen when it gets, when it gets really close to breaking, but without breaking. So long story short, if you're using fluorocarbon lines and you get in a situation where you're fighting the big fish or you, or you, about, you get hung on the bottom and have to pull out, if, if you get the line compromised where it's almost stressed to the point where it breaks, go ahead, retie, even if it doesn't look bad, right? It, it, it won't look this bad until after it breaks. It's like that shock wave after it breaks is when it looks bad. The lines looked good all the way until they broke either way. So you won't have any visible difference. So when it gets stressed and you're using fluoro, make sure to change it out. If we're using mono, you can keep using it until you see some actual physical abrasions from fish. This is actually the, the exact leader line that I use now. I've been using it for a, about a year or two. I just use the bulk spool material. I can't tell any difference from the leader spool other than convenience, but I just put this in my tackle bag and, uh, and now I have uh, probably a lifetime supply of leader line for like seven or eight dollars. Whereas these little small wrist spools, they're way more expensive for less line. And again, after seeing results like this where they are provably worse for specific situations. I'm now, again, more dead set 
on just using straight mono. So if you haven't seen the abrasion test on the mono versus fluoro, highly recommend checking those out. We ac I actually you know, have an assembly for that. It's actually right behind the camera and where, where I actually have the, the equal diameter lines uh, and we can visibly show that the mono has better abrasion resistance compared to fluoro when going over sandpaper. So what I'll do is I'll put a link down below for that in case you're curious. If you have any questions or comments about this experiment, if there was anything that could, have been, that could have been done to make it more fair, please let me know as well. I welcome any and all feedback, right? This is These experiments are for me just as much uh, for you. So if there's any way to make it better, uh, please let me know. But based on what I did, at least what I feel like I did, I'm, I'm confident in saying that that fluoro line, for whatever reason, not sure why, definitely degrades over time after getting stressed whereas mono, traditional mono, doesn't seem to have that, uh, that issue. All right, so lastly, if you happen to need some, some leader line, we have both fluoro and mono at our store at fishstrong.com. Insider Club members, as with pretty much everything on the site, you save at least 20% off, so great savings there. And if you're not familiar with our fishing club, we specialize in just helping our members catch more redfish, sea trout, snook, flounder. We guarantee you'll catch more fish than ever before while saving money on all the tackle you need. To learn more about that, saltstrong.com. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time and watching. We hope to see you again soon.